Hello, hi. I'm here at uh, the Drupa Touchpoint Sustainability booth, a fantastic booth as we can see here. It says uh, ready to implement sustainability. Uh, it's been initiated by VDMA and on behalf of VDMA, I have Mark here with me. Hello, Mark. Hi. Good to see you. Good to see you as well. Yeah, take us through this journey, Mark. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, warm welcome at Touchpoint Sustainability. This is one of the yeah, special forums of Drupa this year for the and first time. We try to give a, to be a showroom for the whole industry uh, what is possible already today. At the end of the day, greenwashing is not needed anymore because there are so many possibilities to do or to use sustainable solutions in the production process. Uh, it's not needed to do anything else. And this is somehow what we try here in different areas, but the industry as it is so huge, it's such a big industry, we have no chance to give such an overview. Mm -hmm. So therefore we try to anyways, and we have 30 partners, co-exhibitors, uh, and we organize this booth like this. So at the end of the day, we have this exhibition area, yeah, uh, where we have two dimensions. One dimension is that we have a part of digitalization over there because digitalization is a bracket for at the end of the day each process so, so many sustainable uh, solutions are only possible due to the digitization and new digital solutions or possibilities and then we have the value chain at the end of the day yeah we have resources production product usage and recycling yeah everything heads to circular economy of course so in the second player is the time yeah in the area of 24, we show with our co-exhibitors what is possible already today, what is available at the market for the customers. And in 28 and 2040, 28, next Drupa, 2040, a bit ahead, we try to give an outlook where it heads. So of course there is a bit less, therefore the areas is a bit are smaller. But at the end of the day, uh, where we are heading to is also represented in a unbelievable big stage program. We have more than 150 speakers during Drupa with more than 100 slots. So from the beginning of the Drupa in the morning until the end, we have a stage program. And yeah, it's well received from the audience, also from the companies. And yeah, the, the concept is that it's company independent. So our stuff explains it to the visitors. Yeah, it is that there is no marketing guy here that explains you here is the best solution. It is best practice cases for different topics. So also when we, if you have uh, competitors like here, they do not exhibit regarding the same topic. It's different cases what they show. And it's just one uh, possibility. Here's a dryer which saves 30% of energy. So we are in the production area how you can be more sustainable in the production process. Yeah, they, these are, of course, a lot of members of VDMA, but as it is a, a special form of Drupa, it's also non-members. It's also companies from, from Japan, Cabot is from uh, Canada. So um, yeah, at the digitization area, we have T-Systems as provider for uh, uh, yeah, data uh, uh, yeah, transfer. We have also yesterday at stage the professor from the DFKI, which is the German Institute for AI. Uh, so they are also in the field that they make a lot of things possible for the users that we see here. And in the next uh, yeah, floor, we have usage where we try also to showcase that this industry has a future. Yeah, there are several things an app can't solve and you need sometimes paper. And this is also a, a thing of this touch point to show also young people that it's important. It's an interesting industry. It's, it makes sense to stay into or step into this industry because you have digital solutions and there is also a future for this industry um, because of the products that we show here. All right. Can we uh, take us through a journey uh, of uh, some of the samples that uh, as you said, like some of the companies have really shown some products which are really sustainable and yeah. how they've implemented it. So probably you can show some just, uh, success story examples. There are so many things. I said, Heidelberg, this is just a part of a bigger machine. It's a part from a dryer. 
where they save 30% of energy in the drying process. Just an example. Here, TKM, they showcase a cleaner uh, for the ink, water-based. It's so easy, just go over and it's clean, uh, just water-based, so it's not a pollution for the um, environment. Um, Müller Martini at their booth on Hall 1, they have the machine, but here it's an example. It's about, yeah, if you have a book, you write a book, and uh, yeah, you, in former times you produced uh, 5,000 pieces, and then you try to sell it. And this machine is their bigger provider in, in, in the web, but if you order one book, it is immediately produced just this one book at the machine and sent to you. And if you want to change something in the book, you can do it at any time because the book is produced in the moment you order it. Book on demand, basically. Book on demand, actually, yes. Right. Yeah. Uh, tell us uh, what's Bob's showing here. Oh, uh, Bob's is over, over there. there. More okay. interesting, that's in, uh, uh, about their uh, energy savings in the, in, the, in the machinery that they have. Uh, they have a quite interesting also uh, installation at their booth where they explain it. And uh, yeah, it's, this is just a video a production about several things. Yeah, how they, they have actually, I think, four areas at their booth where they explain where they save energy, where they save uh, ink, and also uh, waste that they do not have to produce test examples before they start a real production. Um, a very interesting case, what I wanted to uh, um, yeah, mention is the quartz. That's a problem with foil on labels, because what we figured out together with the Smithers that the future of this industry is label and packaging. Yeah. So newspapers maybe not anymore, but labels and packaging, that's the way to go. And the problem is uh, foil, for example, uh, when it comes to recycling, uh, that uh, producers have problem if you have to uh, need, uh, use foil at your labels because it's difficult to, to recycle. And yet here have a showcase of uh, quartz. Uh, starts at resources, production, because this is what they actually produce. And then the real case and recycling. At the end of the day, it's a real case. Uh, it's a Jägermeister case and uh, you see the label, looks quite nice, mm -hmm. yeah, also absolutely luxury with, uh, with, the, with the vanish here. And the thing is that Jägermeister of course wanted to become more sustainable and asked the printer uh, whether they can make it happen, otherwise they will lose the order because they wanted to get rid of the foil. And at the same time, Kurt showed up and said, we have, we have a solution for you. And this is what we see here. There is no foil needed. The, the Venice is, or the, the, the thing is on the, on the foil and it's just going off in the production process. So that's more easy if we come to the next step where you recycle it and then you bring it into maybe textile, for example. Right. Yeah. And here we are also, now there's the usage. So you recycle the uh, leftover foil. Yeah, uh, the, the you see it here. Okay. And uh, the Tesa, transfer material that you get yeah. is uh, brought back for, for example, recycling. Okay. There's an interesting fact from of Tesa. Yeah. It's packaging. Uh, you know all the packages from also big internet providers. And what they had, they showed also at their booth. So it's, as I said, it's a showroom. And it's an overview also for people that know the industry. But here you can come and get an overview. Maybe you fi figure out things you haven't thought about so far. So it makes it also uh, yeah, interesting for people that are aware of the industry, but maybe you never have learned enough. But here you see what they did, different things that you need for packaging but each of them is made just of paper. There's no plastics. Yes, there's a bit glue, but it's paper. It's a paper solution. Yeah. Right. 
or this is uh, diapers, usually packed in plastics. And Garant has a solution where they do it with, with paper. So they are able to uh, yeah, produce the paper that it is possible also to do so here. Epson, very interesting case. Uh, you print your, of course, like always in your office, uh, you print, you use it for, for I, know, I think it starts again. Um, you use the paper, you print it. What do you do usually if it is confidential, you put it into a bin and send it out somewhere. And they have a solution where they collect it. And this machine that we see here is actually at your office, at your building. And you put in the, 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 the used, you, here we see uh, the, you use it for a presentation or something like that. Uh, you work with it and afterwards you put it into this machine. And after a while, new paper comes out that you can reuse. So recycling of paper inside your office. Yeah, and also this calendar is made of this. So it's not real wide back again, but it, it's reusable inside your office. And also when it comes to confidential things, here you see the machine, yeah, that's the size. And uh, nice idea. Yeah. Of course, you have to add uh, some new paper to it so that it works. Uh, but I see that's some the uh, idea. pouches over there. Can we have yeah, a look course, at that? Of course. And what about so, this one? This one is uh, also a very oh, yeah. high class watch, uh, Glashütte, well known brand uh, in Germany. And I think tomorrow we will have the CEO at stage. This is an example that even luxury goods, customers of luxury goods, requesting sustainable packaging. Yeah, and so they made it happen together with Köhler that uh, these high-class watches are packaged in, uh, uh, or packed in, uh, in packages that are from sustainable solutions. Right. And as I said, this is the usage area where we uh, showcase a bit that this industry has a future and that there are some things you might have also in 2040, yeah, packaging, Toilet paper, yeah, but even this kind of packaging, high class packaging, and we do not just speak about paper, we speak about printing. And you know, printing is on everything, even pieces for cars uh, where you have this chrome or so, it's, it's printed. Yeah. And so we, we try, even, yeah, Kurz has its own money, yeah. So we have König und Bauer, they do, uh, produce the machine where, where the money is printed and Kurz is doing all the yeah, uh, security things inside, so also not just for the Euro. And uh, at this side we have some printers on yeah, uh, more sustainable uh, receipts for, for uh, supermarkets, for example, or packaging also for uh, food with just the paper but also to uh, say it clear we do not say plastic is bad and paper is is good this is often the main point is how the user is using it yeah and what the end user is doing with it uh, therefore it's not against uh, plastics or something here it's just a lot of solutions aim into the direction to use paper instead of plastics but you never know. Also, a bag could be a bit plastics. It could be better if you use it just once. It's better than paper, usually. Right? Mm. So, or for example, HP shows an example uh, to, that you can uh, reuse also plastics. Yeah? I said, maybe not with food, then with uh, something for the dishwasher. Yeah? And this is an example, a real example where we, where this EPDA, by the way, that's from their side, sure, I, uh, where you collect paper like these uh, paper yeah, cups. cups or from, from burgers. And this book is actually made out of such paper. Yep. So yeah, that's, that's the idea. Uh, the last um, but not least, uh, you can just run through this uh, one exactly. barrier fiber cycle okay yeah I, I can't go into details therefore I, right. I'm, I'm not the one no, no, who is explaining okay. everything no uh, problem. at the booth but I, I, I can get that okay don't yeah. worry yeah 
Okay. So, so and the important thing is, yeah. even with this amount of examples, we of course not able to showcase the whole industry. Sure. And therefore, you see over there our our stage, uh, where at the moment there is the next lecture of a person, and we have up to 100 guests in front of the stage. And as I said, we have eight to ten slots per day. Uh, where people are interested in what we are doing. Um, so, yeah, we can say there is a, also a good feedback. We have a survey for our guests, which we show here in lifetime, uh, in real time, sorry, uh, with some uh, questions regarding sustainability of the industry, whether you are prepared or not, and what should we do, uh, but also regarding the touch point, how this concept as we did it the first time, uh, how the visitors see it. And I think it's, it's quite okay. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Yeah.